Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we're going to be painting some war cry scenery so we have our large war cry box set and I know this is a little bit of an older box set but some of the scenery is amazing and very much worth our time not just that this is um, a, a, a huge bunch of different techniques that I'm going to show you in this video that you could use to create some really great looking old worn almost post-apocalyptic um sort of scenery so we're gonna have some real fun we're gonna use a good blend and a mix of different techniques and we're really gonna create something completely unique we're gonna create something so full of character that this is really gonna stand out on our board so what i'm gonna do with this i'm just gonna start off by painting uh, the small wells so i'm gonna uh, paint the very small parts first and we're gonna focus mostly on the stonework for the first video and from there, then we're going to use um, different techniques in a different video. So I'm going to use a different video for all of the wood and things like that. But in this one, we're going to focus mostly on the stonework. And we're going to create this really great, as I say, post-apocalyptic uh, sort of old, old worn um, effect, which kind of makes it look like the earth is reclaiming uh, sort of this old stonework and things like that. It's going to be really great. It's going to be really fun. And as I say, it's going to be a host of different kinds of techniques as well. This is going to have a lot of different cool um, style to it that you can use on all different bits of scenery. So it's not just for the war cry set. This is going to be something that we're going to really create a different um, style to it and it's something that you can take on to use with loads of other different things and loads of other different pieces of scenery if you'd like so as i say we're just going to mix a few different techniques together and we're going to create this really interesting gnarly looking uh, effect so I'm just showing you a few of the little parts that we've got here. I'm mostly going to be focusing on the round sort of well type thing in this video. And that is purely just so that we can uh, focus on a few different um, specific sort of styles and techniques. So we'll be focusing on things like the wood and some parts of the brass and things like that of the bell as you can see here. Uh, we'll be doing that in a different video and I'll bring that out as a part two and I'll paint this really large, great looking piece of scenery in that. Uh, but for now, as I say, we're just gonna focus on these small bits of stone. So first things first, I'm gonna use a small bit of uh, blue-gray pale. So this is a great, great color from Vallejo. This is a blue sort of grayish tone. So this gives us a really good sort of starting point because the color is quite cool and quite um, sort of, uh, like I say, it's a cool blue sort of tone to the gray, which makes this a really cool color to start with your rocks. So the stonework is gonna start off using this really nice sort of blue effect and this really sort of nice toned down gray. Now if you don't have this color from Vallejo, you can use uh, something like a Dawnstone from uh, Citadel, which would be absolutely perfect. Dawnstone would be a really good alternative. From there then, I'm just going to use a gunmetal. So this is a nice dark silver color from Vallejo. And again, if you don't have this one, Lead Belcher from Citadel would be a great alternative. And that's all I'm gonna do is just paint across the grate and the grid just across the top here. And this is gonna be a sort of way of separating the metal from the stonework. And again, using this dark, dark sort of silver, this bluish silver base, this is giving us a really good sort of cool tone to begin with. So what we're doing is we're starting with this really cool cold sort of stonework, cold sort of metal work and we're going to build up from there and create a little bit more uh, like colour and texture and tone and things like that. Once that's dry with it, we're then going to use a small bit of flat brown. This is a sort of red kind of colour so this has a reddy sort of brown tinge to it. And we're going to paint this on the little vase kinds of things just here and we're painting these in this colour just to kind of give this um, effect of like terracotta this sort of um earthy sort of tone to the vases and things like that just to kind of make them a little bit more ancient so that they're not too um advanced they look a little bit more primitive a little bit more old um, and again just add into the worn out old sort of style to the base once that's done i'm going to use a little bit of brown sand and with the brown sand i'm just going to base all of the uh, bones so if you've seen uh, sort of different videos that i've made where i'm painting skeletons or if you've seen the video where i paint actually loads of different skeletons uh, you can use all different techniques for bones and all different techniques for skeletons um, you can use your preferred technique or whichever one you would like to use um, whichever one you prefer your skeletons to look like 
then for this I'm just using this uh, sort of sandy color this sort of sandy tone just to give them a sort of um, cool sort of base color and then we're going to build up the bone textures and the bone colors just a little bit later uh, once we've sort of focused on and got everything else sort of looking really nice now that's just the base coat so that's just the base colors done from there then i'm going to use a combination of all of these shades from citadel the citadel shades are fantastic um, and very very easy to use and i'm going to use a load of different colors just to kind of create this um, like I say, this colourful, worn-out sort of stone effect. And that's all I'm doing is mixing these individually, one part wash or one part shade and one part water. And I'm mixing water in with these just so that they manipulate and move around the miniature in a much, much more um, sort of an easier fashion. They won't pool so heavily and they won't dry down so dark. So this allows me to move the, the shades and the, the wash just around the miniature in such an easy way and it will affect the colour of this blue grey but without toning it down too much. So I'm starting with the Baletang green as you can see and I'm just dabbing and stippling and moving this just around the miniature, just around the areas that I want a little bit of green. And it doesn't matter if you miss bits or anything like that because this is going to be a really rough sort of style, a really rough kind of technique which is going to give us a really interesting sort of worn out look as I keep saying. And bit by bit each layer that progresses we're going to see this sort of effect take hold. So we're starting with that green, then we're going to use the Fugan Orange. Now this is a really nice bright sort of orange tone. This isn't going to be a dark brown and it's not going to darken the miniature. It's just going to give us that vibrant sort of orangey color as well. And again, that's all I'm doing is using one part of the shade, one part water. And that will allow us to move this and manipulate this onto the miniature and into the areas that we want it. You can place this in all different random areas. And as you can see, I'm just dabbing and stippling and just allowing the wash just to do its thing, just to sort of move into all those little recess points. With the orange, I'm also going across the silver, just across the top, as you can see, because these earthy tones are going to work wonders on the silver. This is going to tie the silver and the grey together on the miniature. It's going to be really, really nice. And it doesn't matter while the wash is uh, wet. It doesn't matter if you mix the washes together as well. So if you paint one shade, one wash over the top of another when they're wet, it doesn't matter. What it's going to do is allow them to blend more naturally into each other so this is going to stop them having this big garish color from one blob to another blob to another it's actually going to tie them together in a really nice subtle fashion now once that um, once we've done that shade we're then going to use a Drakenoff nightshade now this one is a dark dark blue color so this is giving us the opportunity now to kind of give a little bit of a bluey shaded kind of color as well. And again with this one, I'm going to paint this across the metal. So I'm just going to add parts to the metal. So I'm not covering all of the gray and all of the metal, just adding parts to the metal and parts to the stonework and just using that dabbing, uh, dabbing technique, that dabbing effect again. As you can see, I'm just dabbing this across the stonework, dabbing this across some of the wash that we've already got there and some of the shades. And again, it doesn't matter if this is all wet and the shades underneath are still wet. It doesn't matter too much because it will tie them together quite nicely. Now you can see Dragonoff Nightshade is normally quite a dark blue color and it does darken miniatures down quite a bit. However, by adding that water, you can see that this is blending into the miniature quite nicely and it's not taking over. So the color's not taking over and dark in the miniature down too much and once we've done the nightshade we're then going to use a Karaberg crimson so this is a nice sort of pinky reddy kind of color as well and you can really see these colors now starting to show through on the miniature you can see this well and all the stonework actually starting to take a lot of the color you can see a lot of the warmth, the elements of cool areas and cold parts there and you can really see that the stonework now isn't just a flat color now once all of that is dry, so once all of our shade is dry, we're then going to focus on doing a few different techniques to bring things back up. Now I'm going to do a light dry brush and we're going to use the original colour. So for this I'm using the uh, Blue Grey Pale or if you've used your Dawnstone from Citadel you could use that one instead. And that's all I'm doing here is just gently dry brushing the stonework back up. And what I'm doing with the dry brushing is making sure that I have almost no paint on the brush whatsoever.
So I'm just dabbing the paint across a small bit of kitchen towel and then just using very, very, very small amount of paint just to bring that highlight back up a little. Uh, you don't have to go too wild. You don't have to go too crazy. You don't need it to be too bright or vibrant or anything like that. We're only dry brushing just so that we can see some of the tone and texture that we're getting out of the stonework. Because the stonework across the edges and around the edges, you can see has this really sort of interesting detail and little creases and chips and things like that. So by dry brushing, it's just going to highlight and pick out those areas in a nice, easy, subtle way. So once we've done the dry brush then, we're just gonna use a small uh, bit of uh, game ink. So I'm just gonna use a sepia ink for this one. And the reason why I'm using the sepia ink is because it's a nice dark, dark ink. So this does have a dark sort of tone to it. Now again, if you don't have this uh, Vallejo sepia ink, it doesn't matter, it's not the end of the world. What you can do instead is you could use the Citadel Agrax Earthshade, and that would do a very similar job. The only reason why I'm using the Gain Ink Sepia is because the Sepia is a little bit darker than the Agrax Earthshade. So this is just giving me a little bit more sort of um, contrast when I'm painting these chips. And that's all I'm going to do with the Sepia is I'm just going to add little bits of the colour, little bits of this dark, dark brown into the chips area, into the area where the stonework is chipped and worn, as you can see. And just using the very tip of the brush, I'm also just going to drag certain bits down from where the chips are. So I'm creating this illusion that there's almost sort of uh, dirt or mud or sort of um, like a, a brown sort of water that's just run down the rock and just left staining down the rocks and down the, down the stonework. It's a nice simple effect, nice and easy to make but it looks fantastic on the model as well. So you can see I'm just, just using the very tip of the minute, uh, very tip of the brush to just pick out all of those details one by one. And again, I've added one part wash, one part water, or one part ink, one part water, specifically to make sure that I can um, add this into the cracks and it's not gonna take over the miniature. So it's gonna dry into a nice, subtle, even effect. Now once that's done, I'm just gonna make some rust effect on the metal. Now for this, you can use your preferred version of your rust effect. For this one, I have a uh, rust deposit from AK Interactive. And this is a really cool enamel style uh, rust paint. This really does stand out on the model. Um, but it, again, if you don't have this, you could simply just use Citadel's Typhus Corrosion. That is a fantastic, fantastic technical paint that will give you a great, great rust effect. I'll be completely honest with you. The only reason I didn't use that is because I've run out. And I recently went to my Warhammer store and completely forgot to pick some up because I got so excited about getting some more Eldar. So once the um, rust effect is dry, then we're gonna go back over the metal and the rust using our Agrax Earthshade. And that's gonna tie all of that rust and metal together and create a really dark sort of brown effect. As you can see across the top, it looks fantastic. Then we're gonna go back to our flat brown and we're just gonna use a very small uh, detail brush just to pick around uh, areas where we want sort of the highlights to be across these pots as you can see, using a mixture of stippling and scratching techniques. If you have followed the channel, you'll be used to these techniques by now. Uh, if not, I will be making uh, a video dedicated just to all these different techniques and their uses. So don't worry too much. Just use the tip of the brush and repaint the color that we've got on the, uh, the pots. Once that is dry, then we're also going to use a mahogany brown just to pick out all of those details across the edges, just like so. And the mahogany brown is a nice light brown color that gives us a perfect highlight to that flat brown tone. And then with this one, again, using the very tip of the brush because we've got a lot of detail that we can use and we've got a lot of control using this small brush, you can create little scratches just across the pots like so, which makes the pots look really worn and really sort of run down and really old fashioned, which ties in and suits our, um, ties in and suits our style for our rocky base really, really nicely. You can see that the rocks and everything has all dried into a really nice even sort of tone and it is looking great. But as we build up, we're going to put some cool sort of effects together. We're going to add some moss and all different things like that. And it's going to really, really turn out to be this amazing looking old, old sort of worn out uh, base. It's going to look fantastic. And I can't wait to get the whole set painted uh, because that's going to give me something really, really nice to be proud of. 
So as I said earlier, we're gonna just paint over the skulls and the bones. And for this, I'm just gonna use a bone white now on top of that brown. So that sandy brown was a great base color because we now have these dark areas in between the eyes and the nose and things like that. And that's all I've got to do is just using the tip of the brush, just start to pick up all of the details just around the areas where we want the nice light sort of white color, this nice sort of bone, uh, creamy bone tone to, uh, to, to sit. And it's just about taking your time, being careful not to get this cream color on the stonework that we've spent so long uh, working on. As you can see, I'm just leaving a little gap just between the eyes and the skull itself, just to create that little bit of a groove and a little bit more depth to the model and a little bit more depth to those little skulls that are just sat on the base. From there then, I'm going to use a silver. So this is a nice light silver from Vallejo. Uh, this one is quite a lot like a sort of shining silver from uh, the Army Painter and things like that. And that's what I'm gonna do is using a very small brush. I'm just gonna lightly, and I mean very, very lightly, just dry brush some of that silver back on. And this is just gonna catch the raised areas, uh, some of those little rivets and some of the edges of the metal. And that's gonna add to the effect of the worn out metal, but just with a little bit of the uh, sort of lighter tone showing through. Now from there, we're gonna go a little bit more extreme, a little bit different, and we're gonna use some weathering powders. So I have a weathering powder here that I picked up from Revel, uh, which I've used in previous videos. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this mud green color, and I'm just gonna go straight out of the pot. And that's all I'm gonna do is just use in uh, the stippling effect, using my nice big sort of dry brush, my nice big sort of wash brush. I'm just gonna dab this straight into those creeks uh, those creases the cracks and onto the the base itself and you can really see that tone and color showing through now we're painting this on there because this is giving us that little bit of a moldy kind of green look this old worn green sort of effect and creating that element of a little bit of mold a little bit of moss and things like that which is just adding to that old-fashioned sort of style that we're going for so this is a cool little technique. This is something that the, the Revel box of weathering powders comes with six different colors in there, and they are that simple to use. You could just use them straight out of the pot. Now we're gonna use some moss texture. Now I have this diorama moss from AK Interactive. So I'm gonna use this one, uh, but you can use any sort of basin moss that you, you like. If you've got a hobby round, I've used before in the uh, on the channel in different videos. Uh, and that's all we're gonna do is we're just gonna use some Mod Podge. And the reason why I'm using Mod Podge and not specifically PVA is Mod Podge dries into a really nice sort of matte effect. So this has a matte style of drying, which means that you won't have big shiny areas on your model. If you use PVA glue, it does dry down in a shiny fashion, which then does throw off the whole sort of matte style of the miniature. And that's all I'm doing is painting the, I'm gonna paint the, uh, the, the, the Mod Podge, so the glue, just in between some of the cracks where I've painted the, um, uh, the weathering powder so that it adds to that illusion of uh, sort of moss. And then using this little moss diorama, I'm just picking up little bits and I'm just rolling it between my finger and my thumb. And the reason why I'm rolling it between my finger and my thumb is just by lightly rolling it between uh, your index finger and your thumb, you're getting this creation and this illusion where little bits are falling off and they're gonna stick into those little glue areas. So you're not going over the top, you're not putting big chunks onto the model. We're just rolling uh, between our th finger and thumb so that we get these little, little bits that will just sit on the model and that's creating a nice illusion of moss rather than just big gearish chunks just sat on the model. Now from there, I'm also just gonna add some little blobs of Mod Podge on and around uh, the base. And then I have these little bag of uh, leaves. So this is like um, a bag of little forest leaves. And I just picked this up on Amazon, nice and cheap. Uh, so this was just a quick Amazon purchase of um, just a small bag of leaves. And by just adding a blob of Mod Podge here and there, I'm just gonna stick these leaves on and these are gonna dry down to make it look like we have some great looking leaves just sort of sat uh, that have blown onto our little well. 
And from there, I'm also gonna add one or two small little grass tufts. Now, grass tufts are easy enough to come by. You can get these in almost any hobby shop on Amazon. You can buy them in Games Workshop. There are grass tufts literally for any occasion. They come in different colors, different sizes, different styles. They are very easy to come by. So I'm gonna add some grass tufts on, and I'm also gonna add a flower on as well. So I have a little grass tuft that has purple flowers and things like that. So I'm just gonna add that on top of that as well. You can add whichever ones you want to it and you can uh, really sort of build up the color and the sort of style however you like. Now on the small well, because it's all sealed in, I'm actually going to make a small amount of water effect. So I'm going to use the Vallejo water texture and I'm going to use a small bit of green wash. Now I'm going to use the Vallejo green wash because this has a sort of a different sort of pigmentation to uh, the Citadel ones. And that's all I'm going to do is add one drop on either side, just like so. So there's one drop there, just like so. I'm trying to be careful with this because this water effect can be very, very, very messy and difficult to work with. So I'm just gonna add another drop on the other side. Now, if you want your water to be clear, you could keep it just like this, but I'm gonna add a little bit of green in there as well. And as you can see, we have our poor unfortunate soul just inside the well as well. This poor soul has come to a very unfortunate end and has just ended up resting in our little well here. I think I'll call him Melvin. So this is Melvin, our poor little skull, our poor little adventurer who has been caught with a little bit of misadventure and ended up uh, resting for the rest of its days in our well. And as you can see, I'm just gonna put two little blobs, one just by Melvin and one just in the corner. And then using the brush, I'm just gonna gently mix things together so that that green doesn't look like just a blob. I'm just gonna mix this together. You could use just one blob of green, you could use a small bit of blue, or if you prefer, you could just keep it all nice and clear, however you like. The reason I've gone with the green is just to tie it in to make it look like the water itself is a little bit old and stagnant and worn down and things like that. So that's the reasoning behind me adding a little bit of green in. And you will see Melvin through it as well on occasion. He will pop out to say hi. So don't worry too much. We're not covering him over too much. And all in all, when we're done, we should have something that looks like this. This is a really cool looking uh, style, a really cool looking uh, effect and technique. There's so many different uh, layers and parts that have gone into this and they all tie together in such a cool way. The moss looks great. The leaves on top look great. Um, the, the scratches on the little pots look good. All the different colors are showing through. You can still see parts of the caribou crimson, the green, the blues ties all together towards the end and it makes for such an amazing such a great looking uh, worn out old stone uh, well so yeah and of course we have a little water bit here as well so you can see kind of just how they tie together and as you can see we can just see just in the left hand side what remains of poor little melvin is still there as i said he will pop out just to say hi every now and then there we go there he is poor melvin so there we go, all in all, that is everything complete. If you followed along, you should have something that looks like this. You'll have to let me know in the comments below what you think of this video, and if you enjoyed all of the different techniques that I've used, I would like to say a massive thank you once again to all of you for tuning in, for watching, for your continued support, and the amazing, amazing positivity that you all show this channel. I really do appreciate each and every single one of you, and thank you so much for helping to push me to become a better painter, and to want to give you guys different styles, different techniques, and different kinds of videos all the time. As always, my friends, please take care of yourselves, and thank you so, so much.